Uh, welcome to you all. Um, welcome to a brand new program about uh, creation, about science, about the Bible. First of all, uh, hosted by Alpha and Omega TV. Uh, we have a very special guest today, Mr. John Mackay, geologist, International Director for Creation Research Australia. I'm so happy to see you again, sir. Thank you. Um, welcome here. Um, I've seen most of your video programs. They are all exciting. Um, I came across one of them, which is, uh, am I right? Uh, it's one of the two that are... One of three, actually. One of three. Mm -hmm. And it's this one, The Origin mm -hmm. of Races. Um, very interesting. Would you be so kind to tell us, is there such a thing like a one single origin to all races? Uh, and what does that have to do with the Tower of Babel? Okay, well perhaps I'd better give you the background on how we ended up producing that series okay. for television. I'd given a lecture at Queensland University, my old university, and it dealt with the evidence that all races come from one race. Mm -hmm. And as part of that program, um, I had used some of the native, the Aboriginal stories, you know, the black-skinned people who yes. were in Australia before the Europeans arrived. Now, to put it in perspective, the theory of evolution says the black people in Australia are merely just one branch mm -hmm. of the ape-like creatures from Africa who evolved into human beings some three million years ago. And the Bible says, no, God made one man, and that one man, his descendants, rebelled against God. One of them still believed God, so you have Noah's Ark, mm -hmm. and from Noah's Ark you have all the people are descended from this person, Noah, via a little episode called the Tower of Babel. Yeah. Okay? And so that's, the, that's a very quick perspective. But uh, I remember giving the lecture, very noisy, lots of opposition from the evolutionists, and I quoted one Aboriginal story. Uh, let me give you the short version of yes. it. The version was, in the days when Gajara was still a man, Najada the Great Spirit looked down on the whole world, and all the world was in rebellion against him. So he warned Gajara he was going to send a big flood and wash them all away. So Gujara had to build a big raft and on it he put the cockatoos and the kangaroos and all the lizards and plenty of food. Now, does this sound familiar to you as a story? Well, more than familiar. Because it finishes with a rainbow. Mm. Okay, now, to any Christian, that story looks like a version of what other story that you know? Of the story of the flood. The story yeah. of the flood, right? And so I went on to say you can find these stories in every culture. Mm -hmm. And one of, the, uh, one of my university colleagues said, oh, you're only reading it into it. You're, you're a Christian. You've got a bias. Yes. This is not really what they meant. This is not a Noah's flood story. So I said, well, fair enough. Let's now go and ask the Aboriginals. Mm -hmm. All right? So I remember sitting down in the dust in Western Australia, because we have a lot of dust in Australia, yes. a lot of desert. Right? And I said, you tell me your story. I'll tell you my story. And you be the commentator. So he told me about a story, the big flood, etc. I told him about Noah's flood and I asked him for a comment. And he said, black fella story, white fella story, same thing boss. Right? <laughs> and I thought, well if you can see it, the academic is wearing sunglasses. He can't see it because of his bias. Mm. So I thought, well, this has worked so well, let's go around the world and interview all the native peoples. Mm. And so we set out on a task which lasted maybe five years mm. in visiting all the cultures around the world we could get easy access to and recording their stories. Now, I brought with me again my boomerang. Remember that? Oh, yes, I do. Now, do you see the Aboriginal artwork on it? Yes, I can. Okay, it's very characteristic. Yes. It's not the sort of art you see in the caves of Europe. No. It's not the paintings you see hung in the art galleries. It's a very distinctive type of you know, uh, line x-ray type paintings of kangaroos uh -huh. and Australian animals. But the thing you're holding your, in your hand, well, if I showed a boomerang around the world, where would most people know I'd come from? From Australia. From Australia. Because boomerang equals Australia. Yes. In fact, I remember when I was a little boy at school, they said the black people in Australia invented the boomerang. Well, I've since travelled all over the world, and guess one thing I found about... Uh, boomerangs. What? I was in Arizona and there you have natives 
who used boomerangs until the cowboys gave them six guns. Now Arizona is in what country? It's not in Australia. It's not in, in, the, United States States of in the United States of America. But you see, six guns can shoot rabbits quicker than boomerangs can oh, catch yes. them. Uh, that's so they true. quickly swapped over to the cowboys' six gun. But they used boomerangs until the early 1800s, right? Interesting. Ah, now that began to make me think. Because if you go to India, you'll find boomerangs. Hmm. But then again, you will find dogs that look like our native dogs, mm -hmm. too. And you'll find people, particularly in the Santal Hills, who look just like exactly. Australia's Aboriginals. In fact, they have similar stories. Mm -hmm. Ah, in fact, there's even a link there with Hungary. Because if you come to Australia and you look, we've got boomerangs, you don't have boomerangs. No, we don't. But you do have a word for dog. What's the word for dog in Hungarian? Because I know you speak Hungarian. Yes, I do. It's kutya. Kutya. Well, you can find that word all, all over the world. So you have kutya as a word in Australia for a wild dog. Interesting. And Interesting. so that word, I mean, we have coyote uh -huh. in America, mm. and we have coot uh, in some countries for a rotten, mangy dog. And uh, so you find that in India, you find it in Australia, you find it in Hungary. And so there's lots of evidence that begins to link all these different cultures back together. Mm -hmm. And the boomerang is just one of them. Mm. Now, you've been to London? Uh, yes, I've been. Next time you come, we'll take you to the Natural History Museum, because you haven't been there, correct? But if you go to the other museum, the one with all the archaeology in it, you will find there's Tutankhamun is, is preserved yes. there. Now, you remember Tutankhamun? Yes, he? yes. The pharaoh of Egypt uh, discovered in the late... Uh, 50s or 60s, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. And they dug up with him lots of boomerangs. In fact, you can find the paintings of boomerangs on the walls in Egypt. No one. No one told us. No, they didn't tell me either. No. You see, they told me that the Australian Aborigines had evolved over millions of years and they'd invented boomerangs. Both of those stories are false. Mm. The Aborigines are the last people in the world to keep using, using it. it. Mm. They're very good with them, better than you and better than me, I'm but sure. they didn't invent them. The boomerangs point back to the Middle East. Mm. Same as the word for dog points back to the Middle East. In fact, when you look around the globe, um, well, you've, you've noticed some of the people in America. What color are they? Uh, well, some are white, some are reddish, some are black. Uh huh. And they've got to America because they've come from all over, yes, right? Yes. Except for the redskin Indians who were there but, first. Uh, yes. But you see, when you talk to the redskinned Indians, they have several interesting stories. Mm. Number one, you discover that none of them have a traditional story about evolution. None whatsoever, right? Mm. Even though they lived in tents and shot bows and arrows, you find if you talk to, say, the natives of California, they've got a story about how the Great Spirit, and they believed in a God up there, the Great Spirit, he took the red earth and he shaped it into a doll and he breathed into it. Have you heard that story before? Oh, yes, I did. Where was it? About Adam. Yeah, you see, the missionaries, the Christian missionaries did not need to tell that story to the natives in, in California. They mm. already had that story. And they all have a story about the Great Flood because I've talked to many of the elders and we recorded them. Tell us your story, please. And in fact, one elder said, we came from the creation land over towards the rising sun. 